street, get close to the house, make sure it was dark and everyone was asleep. Now, there were certain rules. The groom couldn't just rush in and grab her out of her bed. The God of Israel is kinder than that. When they would come close enough to her house to be heard, someone in the wedding party would have to shout. When she heard that shout, she knew he'd be there in a moment. She had time only to light her lamp and get her veil on, and her sisters and bridesmaids would light their lamps and join her, and they'd meet the men and go through the village, and, and the people of the village could know there was a wedding because they heard the young people laughing at midnight and going by with the oil lamps. Now, back in our play over at the bridegroom's father's house, things were progressing. If this young man had never built anything else in his life, he was going to get this chamber ready. And it was a project. It had to be well built. The honeymoon was seven days long, just as the believers will be seven years in heaven with their bridegroom. Now, the bride had no idea when he would come. That only depended on how good a builder he was. Mary must have been glad to have a contract from Joseph. After all, a carpenter should know how to put up a bridal chamber. Now, his father was the judge on when the thing was really done. You can see the logic there. If it were up to the young man, he'd throw up some kind of simple shelter and just go and get the girl. But his father would inspect it from time to time to see when it was really ready. After all, it had to be beautiful. You don't honeymoon just any place. And therefore, the father of the bridegroom chose the wedding day. Well, it was a long job and good work. It would teach David patience and diligence. It would give him a useful skill. And most of all, it would keep his mind where it belonged, on the lucky girl. Have you been working all day? All night and all day. I've seen your bride-to-be, such a beautiful girl. I had a feeling you'd be finishing this job quickly. It is almost finished, but I still have work to do. When will the wedding be? Only my father knows. I'll wait for me, and I will come for thee. A time alone, and then you'll be my own. For on the night when all is finished here, and when my father says it's done, that night I'll call to you, your bridegroom comes. I'll wait and see my tender bride to be, how quickly he will cry.
In my father's house are many mansions, places there for all to dwell, and his children will fill those lovely mansions, all his children of faithful Israel. So I must go, yes, I must go. If I go, I'll prepare a place for you, and I'll return. I'll cry aloud, I'll call your name, and you will follow me. Follow me to my father's house and to our mansion. Last will sanctify our love. All around our friends and those who love us, like those mansions in my father's house above. So I must go, yes, I must go. But if I go, I'll prepare a place. I'll return, I'll cry aloud, I'll call your name, and you will follow me. In heaven. Just as in our own nation today, throughout Israel, believers in the Messiah gladly assembled themselves together. They sang songs and gave testimonies and told the spellbinding stories of eyewitness encounters with the Messiah himself. In our play, Devorah and Martha have heard of the man born blind who was healed by the Messiah. They go to the believer.